John Lesk here of Lesk Archery Adventures, series testing, successful hunting. In under a month, I'm heading to the dark continent to take on Black Death with my bow and arrow. Man, I'm fired up about this. I've been dreaming of this literally as long as I can remember. Decades and decades. When I was a little kid, I dreamed about going and taking on a dangerous game animal with my bow and arrow. My dad and I used to dream about that. And now the day is really close to being upon me. I couldn't be more excited. I've got my Bowtech SR6 all rocked and ready to go. It's uh, set up, it's maxed out at 72 pounds on the performance setting but I just have a 27 inch draw so I need to make sure that I have enough uh, arrow weight to get really good kinetic energy and momentum with that shorter draw length as well as I'm gonna be shooting uh, it could be out to longer ranges of like 50 yards or so because I'm doing spot and stock hunting and not just hunting from a blind so I need to combine enough weight to get the momentum and kinetic energy with enough uh, good trajectory to to be able to not have to aim 10 feet high <laughs> from, from the animal. So anyway, I've got a bishop archery galore here in terms of all the different arrows, components, and ways to build them, and what types of heads to use, and footers, and, and, and fusion rods, and so forth. So I'm gonna be explaining a little bit about those components, and about how bishop archery arrows really operate, and how they work, and how their modular system works. And then from there, I'm gonna narrow it down to a few different potential arrow builds for me. Then I'm going to take them to the range, shoot them through the chronograph, calculate the various momentums and kinetic energies, and then shoot them at distance and see how they all fly, and then come up with the one that I'm confident is going to be best for me. So let me start by diving in and taking a look at these different components of Bishop Archery arrows. Okay, so now that we're zoomed in, you can see a little bit better the different arrows that we got here, and I'll be introducing each one of them. This is first the, uh, the FOC King. This is what I use for my North American animals uh, hunting for a lot of the different tests that I do, the long-range flight. It's a fantastic shaft. I just go uh, with just the basic... A simple foot on the end, footer on the end. This is basically a lightweight shaft. It's a 6.2 grains per inch. So it's relatively lightweight and yet really durable at the same time. It can handle a really hard impact well because of the lightweight of the shaft. When, when an arrow hits something really hard and the back end or the shaft itself is really heavy, it's that, it's that sway when it hits that causes the arrow to break a lot of times. But these being lightweight, you don't have that problem. So that's the basic shaft that I use day to day in a lot of my testing. They also make the shaft, uh, the same one, the FOC King, with different types of external footers here. And here you see like a double footing, which is they use different uh, aluminum shafts to go over the carbon shaft. And then in addition to that, they have these different fusion rods. This is, um, this is a short like internal footer that you can slide in the back and they have a tool that you can slide it in and screw it in to the insert. So here's the insert. It goes in like that, and then uh, it, it, in the front of the arrow, the broadhead will go straight into that, and then this goes inside, and this basically can go inside any of these arrows, and it provides like an extra stiffness and changes the whole stiffness, the whole spining of that arrow, as well as adds another 65 grains or so. So this is their, their shorter fusion rod or their internal footer as they call it. Then they also have this longer fusion rod. This is what they call their pink fusion rod. This is the blue tusk uh, internal footer. And this basically goes inside any of these shafts, the whole length of the shaft and adds like an incredible amount of weight and an incredible amount of stiffness to the arrow. So those are the basic components. Uh, starting with the FOC King, you can add any of those to the FOC King and change it uh, drastically from like a, a spine of, these are spined at 300, they can go down to 150 spine by adding those various components. Then they have, in addition to the FOC King, they've got this uh, FAD Eliminator, the FAD Eliminator. And FAD stands for Firearms Dispatch 
eliminator. So what happens in, in Africa a lot of times, you go after a dangerous game and if you just wound the animal and it charges you, you're not able to put it out of its misery or kill it with an arrow, then you have to dispatch of it with a firearm. Well, this is called affectionately the firearm dispatch eliminator. In other words, you shoot it with this, you don't need to use a firearm to dispatch of it. You're going to dispatch of it well just with this arrow. Okay, I hope that happens with me. So with this arrow, it's, it's a bit thicker, it's a bit stiffer, it's a bit heavier. The grains per inch of this or this is like a 250 as opposed to a 300 spine and the grains per inch are 12.2 so it's about double the weight of the FOC King and then again it comes with a different types of external footings right there that add to the stiffness and add to the weight as well as you can use the blue tusk internal footer there uh, or you can use the uh, the pink fusion rod and and run that the whole length of the arrow which increases the stiffness tremendously it'll go from uh, 12.2 grains per inch to 22.6 grains per inch and it'll go from um, a 250 spine down to a 50 spine just by adding this. So I've got these arrows that are cut to my length. I use an arrow of 25 and a half inches and so all these are cut to that as well as this pink fusion rod is cut to that. Now I've also got um, an FOC, I mean a, a fad eliminator right here with the, the external footer right here and this has this fusion rod already added into it and I wish you could feel it but I mean it's quite a bit heavier and quite a bit stiffer. Then for the really heavy arrow build you've got their full length 35 inch arrow okay this is the fad eliminator in its full length 35 inches the total weight of this if you add their 600 grain head and I'm going to get to that in a second is 1583 grains okay and the straightness on all of these bishop arrows it's just incredible they use um, a, a, a carbon that to my knowledge it's not used in any other arrow made anywhere in the world today they use it uh, a torre prepreg torre usa prepreg carbon a woven carbon at um at a proprietary carbon content that's really like greater than anything else on the market and so the straightness of these arrows is phenomenal at their full 35 inches the uncut version they're sub 0.001 inches of straightness so that's amazing at that kind of a length at, as well as the durability and stiffness stiffness of 50 at this length of that straightness man this is like an incredible head really incredible arrow really it's like a spear okay you feel like you could throw it like a spear now on that when you go into the different heads there's a lot of different choices in heads here's the uh, the 250 grain scientific method and it comes with a corresponding field point, 250 grain field point for practicing. Then here's the 315 grain scientific method. These are all uh, bishops. They're made out of S7 tool steel. They're the toughest broadheads on the planet. They're super thick, super durable. They, they come to a, um, a, an incredible single bevel edge. They rotate amazingly well because of their thickness. And because they're made out of the S7 tool steel, you get no edge chatter. I mean, when they rotate you really split bone and they just keep cutting and cutting all the way through so that 315 comes with the corresponding 315 grain field point or you can go full throttle and go with the 600 grain scientific method have you ever seen a 600 grain head i mean this thing truly is like a spear tip i mean it just when you hold it you just kind of want to like shoot something in the head with it. I mean, it is like a force to be reckoned with 600 grains. And then the field point is just as cool. Here's the field point that comes with that 600 grain field point. You probably never hold, held a 600 grain field point before. I never had. When you screw it in, you feel like you're screwing in a silencer. It's that big, this, this cylinder that you just screw into your arrow. So these are the basic different components and you can mix and match and change the weight and change the stiffness and 
and, and do so much with all these different components. And then if you use their, um, they, they've got this incredible epoxy, gosh, it's like, it's like second to none. If you use their epoxy and you epoxy in all these different components, they're extra, extra, super strong. They're not going anywhere and they're gonna penetrate really deeply. So for my aero build, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with four different choices. I've been mixing and matching, but I've narrowed it down to four different choices. One of them is with the, uh, the FAD eliminator with the external footer, but no internal fusion rod, no internal footer, no internal fusion rod. And so the total weight on that is based on the different heads that you add. If I, if I use the 215 grain head, then it's 760 grains. If I use the 315 grain head, then I go up to 828 grains. And then if I use the 600 grain head, then I go all the way up to 1126 grains. So those are the options I have in that. The other option I have is to use the big giant one and just kind of lob one out there, okay? Because this thing is really heavy. With the 600 grain head, like I said earlier, it's 1,583 grains. This has the full length fusion rod inside of it. It's like super stiff, super heavy. The momentum of this thing is just out of this world. And again, when you screw that head in there, it feels like you could just throw this at the animal and kill it that way. So those are the four different arrows that I'm gonna be testing with those different heads. I'm gonna shoot them through a chronograph, and then I'm gonna shoot them at the range, see how they fly, and try to figure out which one is gonna be right for me. Now I'm gonna shoot all of these arrows at 20 yards and see what kind of drop I get for the heavier ones, I'm gonna aim at that red dot in the upper right hand, very tippy top of the, uh, of the target face. And then the other ones uh, that get lighter, I'm gonna aim for the top right target face. Now I'll go with the two lighter ones, the 828 grain followed by the 760 grain at 20 yards, and I'll aim for that top target face on the right side. Here's the drop of those two heavy arrows. The heaviest at the bottom, the 1583, dropped 23 and a half inches, and the 1128 grain dropped 12 inches at 20 yards. Here's the drop of those two lighter ones. The lighter of the two dropped six inches and the one that's a little bit heavier dropped seven inches at 20 yards. Now I'm gonna shoot all of these at 40 yards and see what kind of trajectory I get at 40 yards since I need to be able to shoot out to 50 yards. This is the farthest I can get indoors. So I'm gonna start with the heaviest ones. So for the heaviest ones, I'm gonna be aiming where the brown carpet meets the white paint at the very tippy top because I have no idea how far they're gonna drop. And that'll be working down from that 1,583 grain to the 1,126, the 828, and then the 760. Let's see how they do. Here you see, uh, here you see the first three arrows at 40 yards, and you see at the very bottom the 1,583 grain arrow. I aimed at that very top of the carpet, and it dropped a total of seven feet six inches at 40 yards. Wow. And then above that, you see the next two arrows were right together. The first one was 1,126 grains. And again, I aimed at the top of the carpet. That dropped a total of four feet, six inches. And then the other one that grouped right with it, I aimed at the target at the top of that block and that dropped 29 inches. That was the 828 grain. So interesting to see the drop. Now I'm gonna go back and shoot the uh, 760 grain arrow and see how that does. Now I'm gonna go with the 760 grain arrow at 40 yards. I'm gonna aim at that green dot that's right between the two target faces in the top white target. The drop on the 760 grain arrow at 40 yards was 24 and a half inches. 
So here are my four different arrow builds that I've narrowed it down to. And I went out to the range today, into the shop, and shot them through a chronograph. So for this one, this was the, the heaviest, the 1,583 grains. The speed I got with that was 147 feet per second. That gave a kinetic energy of 75 and a momentum over 1.0. I'm convinced I could shoot at the Cape Buffalo anywhere on its body with this and I get a pass through. This thing isn't going to stop, but it's a bit heavy. It dropped for me at 40 yards. It dropped seven and a half feet over my normal 460 grain arrow. So that was a little steep. Next was the 1126 grain arrow. And with this one, I got a speed of 173 feet per second. Kinetic energy was actually the same as the other one, 75. And the momentum came out to 0.86. So still a tremendous amount of momentum, but a little too much weight, a little too much of a drop for my liking. Then these were the other two, and I kind of narrowed it down to these two. This was with the 315 grain head, and this was with the 250 grain head. So next was the 315 grain tip, which gave a total arrow weight of 828 grains. And with that, I got 199 feet per second, giving a kinetic energy of, I think it was 73, and the momentum of 0.73, which was still good, and it flew pretty well. But this was the one I liked the most. This was using the 250 grain head and the total arrow weight was 760 grains. The speed I got with this was 209 feet per second, giving a kinetic energy of 74 and giving um, a momentum of 0.70. So still plenty of momentum and good kinetic energy and I got pretty decent flight, a good trajectory. So within my, my sight housing, I can have pins 20 to 50 all within that, not have to move the, the sight frame at all, not have to use my movable sight or move the pins at all. The pin gap worked out really good for that. So this is my Cape Buffalo arrow build. I'm super fired up about it, 760 grains, 250 grain tip. I've got the, the FAD eliminator here and I can't wait to do more shooting with it. I've already got it dialed in and man, it's just drilling. It's like so accurate and so quiet out to 50 yards. And uh, I look forward to just shooting it into some heavy stuff and see what kind of penetration I can get and what kind of devastation I can cause. And then I'm taking it over to Africa and I'm gonna get some penetration and devastation on Black Death. This whole process of working on this arrow build has just been a blast. I've loved shooting really heavy arrows and I've loved coming out with the one that I'm gonna be taking to Africa with me. As Bo Mar would say, it's my death dart, my 760 grain death dart. And, uh, and what I'm gonna do now as I conclude is I'm just gonna shoot stuff with it. Okay, I know it flies great out to 50 yards at least and I know it penetrates well just based on the weight, but I wanna kinda of test it out. I'm gonna shoot it through a couple different mediums here as I close out and just see how well it does. So check this out. The first thing I'm going to shoot with my Cape Buffalo arrow is two elk scapula duct taped together followed by a one-third inch rubber foam mat and then the clear ballistics gel FBI grade. This would be a good test because Cape Buffaloes have overlapping ribs and you got to be able to get through both layers of ribs oftentimes in order to get to the vitals. Okay, see here, <laughs> that's exactly what a single bevel does. It gets an incredible hole in that first layer because it just twists, it rotates, and knocks a big enough hole for the arrow to go through, the shaft to go through, clear, and then it goes into the second layer, does the same thing with the second layer. You get that rotation and it breaks a nice big hole so the shaft can go through without even rubbing against the, uh, the scapula, the bone itself. In terms of the penetration itself into the gel, after going through, the two elk scapula and that rubber foam mat, it penetrated eight inches into the gel itself, which was really impressive. And you can see the wound channel as well. It's kind of hard to see with some of these other arrows that I've shot into the gel already, but you can see it rotated even in the gel. The total rotation from the first impact into the scapula until the final resting place was about 90 degrees which is really nice rotation. For the next test, I've got two two by fours. This 
again, it's a cool demonstration of a single bevel that even though the head went in um, at, a, at an angle, it wasn't vertical as it went in. It went in about, you know, 45 degree angle, as you can see, like northeast, southwest. It's still, because of that rotation, it, uh, it split the two by four, which is exactly what it would do on a bone. Split it all the way through front and back. And finally, a Cape Buffalo arrow build would just not be complete if I didn't shoot it into a cinder block. And here I've got like an extra super heavy duty cinder block. It's bigger than the normal ones and thicker than the normal ones set up down there inside my broadhead box, so to speak. And I do it like this so the arrow won't ricochet up top and go into one of my mounts. The only thing it can do is come straight back at me, which I hope it doesn't do that either. But I'm going to shoot it uh, into this, into this um, block and see what happens. I've got lights set up on it down there. That's what makes that illuminated a little bit down there. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a bit. Okay, yeah, that's where I'm going to be shooting. Dang, okay, that was really cool. <laughs> it just stuck. I didn't expect it to stick. Sparks flew, and man, I can still smell it. Uh, little pieces of the center block came all the way back and hit me, but that's really impressive. If it can do that to a center block, I'm ready for a Cape Buffalo. Man, this is impressive. Okay, so the broadhead stuck right into that center block, took out a huge chunk of the front, but if you look around the back, look at the back, it took out a huge chunk from the back as well. You see that chunk sitting down there? And then look at the wall, man. It just took out took out a giant chunk of the wall. It actually made a hole all the way through. That's really, really impressive. I'm definitely ready for a buffalo now. Here's the broadhead after going through two elk scapula, a two by four, and an inch and a half of concrete. I measured it out. The wall thickness in that center block was an inch and a half thick. And here you see the head is just in pristine condition. There's only superficial scratches on it. The edge itself is pristine. And this again is not even their top of the line model. The ones that I'm saving for the Cape Buffalo. This is like their, their second tier, which is really still amazingly impressive. The arrow itself is pristine, perfect condition. And here's the, uh, the center block. I put um, a light on inside of it so you can see that hole but it punched a hole all the way through an inch and a half of concrete and still stayed in incredible shape like this man impressive broadhead impressive arrow i think this is the right arrow build for me it's dead on at 50 yards really great trajectory super tough deep penetration great rotation to split bone i'm ready for the cape buffalo bring on black death next stop Africa. <laughs>